You're listening to Last Word Radio, where you, you get your last word. Welcome to the Fourth Line Podcast, part of the Alberta Podcast Network, powered by ATB. This is June the 24th, 2018. With you today is myself, Carl, and the always wonderful Joel. Welcome to the weekend. We are recording this on a Sunday, the rare Sunday recording. Uh, we, we barely ever have recorded on a Sunday. Yeah, and you usually work Sundays, so we're this is an extra treat. Sundays in Joel's basement. It's true. It's actually nice and cool down here, though. Yeah, we, we just got back from the driving range. Uh, I think we might hit up a museum after we finish recording this. And then off to Moxie's. And then we'll go hit up a Moxie's and, uh, I don't know, have... Uh, I don't know what's good at Moxie's, but very big weekend. I saw Jurassic World this weekend. That is That is probably my favorite movie franchise ever really i think so and like this one didn't disappoint it it wasn't next level but it was it's just like it was a good movie i like to watch dinosaurs run around and chase people did and you, that's that's what i got out of it did you think like were you in the jurassic park being like the best franchise before chris pratt entered it or was that like when he entered the franchise you were like this is one i gotta be a part of no, oh no it was like the first three movies are some of my favorite movies. Even, you know, most people don't like all of them. I'm a big fan of the entire collection of Jurassic Park movies. I'd I'd say number one is one of my favorite movies of all time. But that's probably the best one of all of them. Oh, yeah. That's, as, that's why I, yeah. As usual. Like, so did you see the article this week about how the guy, like, so like the scientist from Jurassic Park is like going to actually like create dinosaurs? <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. So he, yeah. Like, he, so they have like a scientist that, like, I don't know, like fact checks all of their science. I don't know how true any of their science is. But, like, anyway, they, they have a scientist. I, I mean, I'm fairly certain that you can make dinosaurs from a mosquito in a piece of amber. I think that's accurate. See, this guy is actually saying, like, so the scientists they use, the, the Ross, the paleontologist. Right. I'm assuming his name is Ross. I assume, yeah, that's what all of them are called. He's like, I'm going to make dinosaurs in five years. That is a that's a terrible idea. Why would he do that? It's like he <laughs> hasn't seen. I feel like yes, there's a lot of things that might not be accurate in those movies, but I'm fairly certain that recreating the dinosaurs will go as terribly as those movies does. I don't think he's like. It's almost like he's helped them with the science, but hasn't actually like watched what they've created. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like, uh, no surprise, Joel. We don't. No, I was gonna say it's like the fact that we don't listen to our own podcast, but it's not even that. It's like if I gave you like a segment. I, it's a terrible analogy. It's nothing. It's such a terrible idea. I I can't even function. Why would he think that that's a good idea? I don't know, but apparently he thinks he's gonna do it. Yeah, you shouldn't do that. You should most certainly not. Bring back dinosaurs. I, I'm intrigued, though. Like, if he actually did it. So, what would you? What would be the first dinosaur you would want? Like, you want to start with the herbivores, obviously, because that's really? less dangerous. I was thinking T. Rex. Like, I was thinking like. So you just start with the one that is the most terrifying. Yeah, just don't do any that can like like. So here's where Jurassic Park goes wrong. Let me let me break it down for you. Okay. They create water dinosaurs don't do that don't create the ones that can move like from different pieces of land especially the flying ones don't do flying ones flying ones are even harder to contain yeah so just do land ones and only put them on an island like jurassic park's not a problem if you don't have flying ones and water ones because they don't go like you, you, they're not going to go through New York because they're on this island. But then also, don't put people on the island, probably. But then how are they going to get there? So you just like shove them, like you. you well, just the people that want to be there can be there. But if, but like you sign a waiver that says like if they eats me, I like I don't have like nobody has to care about it. I, yeah, 
I feel like you should probably find a way to not... Do you want to make them so that they can reproduce as well? Like, do you want boy and girl dinosaurs? Or are you going to use a frog and have that go, like, terribly, like, in the first movie? Yeah, I guess, like, that's probably wise not to do. But, like, it doesn't really matter as long as you contain them. Like, we... I just feel like they weren't smart enough to contain them, and they created the wrong types of dinosaurs. But, like, what's wrong with a T-Rex on an island by himself? Is he going to swim across the ocean? Probably not. Do we know that there's not currently a T-Rex on an island by itself somewhere already? Exactly. Like, I might have actually just been watching a documentary last night. That's probably what you were doing. I think that's, yeah, that might have been it. Because dinosaurs. Yeah, I, I feel like that was a documentary. Anyways, Joel, lots to happen this week. Uh, NHL draft has happened. Some trades, uh, some some picks, hundreds of picks. Literally hundreds of picks. Um, Joel is very confused, looking for something. Is this game over? No. Oh. No. I thought it was over. No. It's not even close to being It's not even close. I don't know why they're showing that. (laughs) We're watching baseball. We've got the baseball game on, and it's the sixth inning. Okay. It was like acting like it was over. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. But I'm as confused right now as the majority of, like, fans on teams that they love. Yeah. This was a... I feel like this was a bad weekend. Before we get into any of the draft shenanigans, just remind everyone about the fine folks at ATB Financial. They are... The official bank of choice of the Fourth Line Podcast and the Alberta Podcast Network. You can head over to atb.com slash listens and find out what they can do, what kind of services they provide, and uh, just let them know what you're looking for. They will find the way that they can fit the needs that you have in a big way. atb.com slash listens. Head over there. You know who should have been listening, Joel? Like I've got a long list. Every NHL general manager. Well, I don't think everyone. Uh, I can think of probably, there was probably five teams that did well this weekend. Just a lot of teams that did at least something that was disappointing. I'm sure they, there was, but like, I would say there was like a handful of manager, like general managers that like did really, really badly. There was a bunch that just kind of like did like, it's like, you didn't really do great, but you didn't do bad. You just kind of were there. Yeah. You showed up. Which I would say, like, probably the majority's in that. And then there's, like, like was there any, there's, like, one or two that, like, did really well? Yeah. I can't even think of that many that did really well. Yeah. There's there's a few, but let's, do you want to, let's start with, I guess, let's start with what the trade that happened before the draft. Everyone was wanting trades to happen, right? And so we're getting into the draft, and the first dra- trade happened about 30 minutes before the draft started. This You only want to talk about this because it's like your worlds are colliding. Yeah, this is a mashup. This is like the, uh, I don't know if I mentioned on the show, the, the fan fiction theory I had with uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and Parks and Rec being a collaboration. That's what the most ambitious crossover ever. (laughs) So is this, I guess, so as an avalanche fan, as an avalanche fan, I'm happy. I'm very happy right now. As a quasi capitals fan. I'm, I'm happy. Like, I think this is a situation that both teams won. I don't think the capitals won. I don't think they lost, but I don't think they won. Uh, you get a second round pick for a backup goalie. Whoop de doo. Like that happens every year with like seven goalies. Right. But so, so you've turned him into something. It's just fine. Yeah. But like So the the trade we're talking about, Philip Grubauer, Brooks Orpik going to the abs for a second rounder. Continue. I just don't think like I guess if anything i guess it's a win if they can sign Carlson. Right. Or, like, they're going to use that cap space on something. Either they're going to use it terribly or they're going to sign John Carlson. Which could be using it terribly. Which could be be using it terribly as well. It's probably not. I actually, I think I was saying this to you. Like, chances are, like, the team that regrets the John Carlson signing the most will be the Caps. Any other team that signs him will probably regret it. Or the least will be the Caps. Like, the team that will be the happiest yeah i don't think the caps will like he'll probably do just fine with the caps because you know what he is he's 
like he's decent on the caps. He's obviously like good enough to like make a lot of money. And like he's he's better than the other free agent defensemen that have left the caps. Like if you were to s- s- compare him like Carl Olsner, even though like not 2017 18 Carl Olsner, but previous versions. Well, yeah, because 2017 18 Carl Olsner is like the same Carl Olsner that's always been there. It's just, it's amazing what you can like hide when you're on a good team. Yeah. So, and like not on a top pair. Like I would argue Shattenkirk was better not on the caps than on the caps. For sure. So, and like. He's probably, I don't know, like, is Shattenkirk or is Shattenkirk any, like, he's probably similar to Carlson. I don't know. Yeah. Like, probably a little worse. I don't know. So, but that's what, like, that's the only way they win is because they got rid of Orpik, who then got bought out. Yeah. So, which you'll probably just end up back in Washington. That'd be, that's my guess. I assume so, yeah. So, which... Avalanche are fine with like they don't, they don't care. They don't care where he goes. Yeah, it's... but yeah. So I don't know. Like I, it's kind of like whatever for Washington. It doesn't cost you much for the Avalanche, and you hope that he is. You hope that Grubauer is more Cam Talbot than Anti Ratna. Ratna. Rant. Ratna. Ranta. Ranta. Just you were <laughs> a little a little too many things in there. Yeah. Um. And I. It's hard to know. He was obviously had a fair amount of time with the Caps this year. And this was the first time that he's had significant playing time. Um, and when Simeon Varlamov inevitably gets hurt, we'll see what he can do at that time. Because he's he's going to get hurt. Do you think and Grubauer Varlam- is going to get time? You think? You think? Don't you think Varlamov starts as like one B instead of one A? No, he's one A. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Is Varlamov, when healthy, better than Grubauer? Yes. Wow. Yeah. You love Varlamov. Yeah. You have avalanche capital shaded glasses for <laughs> Simeon Varlamov. He is not that – I don't know why. He's not that good of a goalie. He's like – He's a – like he's a starting goaltender. Yeah, but he's not – I would say you want Grubauer to – win the job that's oh, what you yeah, want for sure you want you in training camp in preseason i was gonna say spring training but that's not a thing in the nhl in preseason you want grubauer to be number one and you and the, like you don't want you don't want varlamov that guy is you want him to go away well he only has one more year and then he will go away so that's fine no you guys are gonna say he'll he, guaranteed he's gonna be the backup to grubauer for the next three years. Well, if that's the case, then he's at least taking a pay cut. So you hope so. I I would I would bet that Joe Sakic's not foolish enough to pay a backup goalie five point six million. Um. So yeah, we've got that, and I I like it. We have the fact that we have Grubauer gives us the time. We signed that goalie out of the K this year, which I think a lot of people were expecting him maybe to be our backup. Maybe um, you buy out Varlamov. I don't think that's going to happen. You love that guy. Well, they're not going to buy him out. He's the only guy with like proven starter ability. So Grubauer, when you said he got significant playing time, he he didn't really. Compared to previous seasons. Like, 10 extra games. Yeah, that's a 12% of the season. Yes. What's like, a 2.35 goals against average? on the Capitals translated onto the Avalanche. I'd have to, I cannot look that number up on the spot. I, <laughs> that isn't, that is not math that I can do right now. It's probably like 3.17. No, <laughs> no. It, either way, I'm, I'm happy with it. We'll see what Grubauer gets. That's like that. That was the goalie to pick up this off season was Grubauer. I was a little surprised that we were the ones who ended up with him because there was teams with bigger holes but we were also the only team that would take Brooks or pick. So yeah, that's a big part. And it's, it's a, it's, you have no idea what it's going to be. It's like, this is, this is this year's Scott Darling, Eddie Lack, Cam Talbot, Jonathan Bernier. It's like these guys that were traded for second round picks the last, however many years. Yeah. And 
you hope he you hope that he is like I said more Cam Talbot less Scott Darling yeah so and yeah there's there's a lot of uh a lot of backup goalies that become still backup goalies so. and you know if if he's a a serviceable backup I'm okay paying a second round or 3 million or a second round pick and 3 million a season for that if he's not then oops yeah that was so that kicked off draft weekend yeah. there's been a surprising little amount of of trades i was looking at this the other day so cuz like ever there's been lots of talk i've seen lots of lots of chatter if you will about how like everyone's waiting until july 1st for trades historically there's only been two maybe three trades a year after july 1st except for one or two seasons where there was like a larger amount in the last like eight to ten years where trades typically happened either pre-draft during the draft or before july 1st so to only have like three or four trades between now and July 1st, like it's a really small amount historically. Well, and, and the talk, and let's, let's touch on this since it, it's coming up. The, what I heard was the, there was a lot of people waiting for some reason. They were waiting for the Kovalchuk to Varys shoes to drop before making moves. Which makes zero sense. Which makes zero sense. I don't fully buy it. But now that Kovalchuk signed. It's still nothing. I could buy Kovalchuk a little bit because he was kind of more open on some of the teams that were looking like the Kings. So like they were looking at Jeff Skinner, which makes sense that they were wanting to hear on, Hey, if we can get Kovalchuk for nothing and not have to trade for Jeff Skinner. Great. So that makes sense. But like John Tavares is in a completely different stratosphere. There's no one on the trade market that is like John Tavares. No, you're not going out there and being like, well, this is our backup John Tavares plan. Just, just go out and get that player. Yeah, like so that it doesn't make any sense. It's not like, oh hey, if I'm not gonna get Tavares, I Mark Shifley is just available. Let's go trade for him. And like that level of player is not out there. So these people waiting for the Tavares and like it's I would say what okay at ninety percent he's going back to the island now. I'd say if not more, yeah. Like it's. With Lou there now, he's got a good coach. Yeah, Trot's Lou, there. Lou will probably go and get a goalie. Like that's his. He like Lamorello has never not had a goalie. Yeah, so he's gonna go and get a goalie. I don't get like so. I I am interested to see. Did you hear the teams that are so? So there was the big meeting today. He met with all the teams today. The five teams. Do you know the five teams? I know the Leafs were there because Twitter wouldn't stop talking about it. Well, cause, and of course the Leafs were there. Like, you know, they have the cap space and he's from there. So, like, obviously, so uh, St. Louis uninvited. They got the, <laughs> their, their, their invitation uh, didn't get lost in the mail. He just was like, nope. Like, St. Louis was like, hey, like, did, our, did it get lost in the mail? And Tavares is like, I didn't send one, guys. Like, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I don't want to go there. Lightning invited. Okay. They're, he's not going to the Lightning. They can't afford to pay him. No, they have no... Because you want to know what? They'd have to like trade like Tyler Johnson. Nobody wants Tyler Johnson. They'd have to send some, some pieces. They'd have to like... They'd have to send... like They'd have to get rid of Tyler Johnson. And then they'd have to choose... You... You have to choose two, two or three. Now you probably you probably fit three, or three of these five: Vesleski, Stamkos, Kucherov, Tavares, and Hedman. Choose two of those guys, and you have to get rid of them. You can't carry all five of those guys. Yeah. So right for next year, as it stands, the Lightning have ten million in cap space and still have to sign. JT Miller and Cedric Pocket. And next year they have to sign after next season they have to sign Kucherov. Yeah. To uh an eleven million a, a Tavares sized deal, yeah. Yeah. So like and do you want the guy that ha- hasn't been on your team and you know is gonna be good but doesn't necessarily fit on your team? 
because we know fit is everything these days. Uh, or do you want Kucherov to play with Stamkos? Like, I don't know why you would. Why I don't know why you would pick Tavares to it over Kucherov. Yeah, I and for sure I would. I would do the same thing, especially when like if you're spending that much money on Tavares, you. To to me, I would you want that much money to be your number one center, and you're already paying a number one center to be that. So what do you like? Where would he slot in? Are you moving Stamkos to the wing? Are you putting one of them on a second line? Like, I don't. I'm not spending that much money to have someone in a secondary role. Yeah. So okay. So Lightning. Who did I say? Lightning Islanders Leafs. San Jose, who's been like. That's like that's the I think that's the team that fits the best. That's the team I would want to go to. Like I don't want to play in New York on the secondary team. I would want to, like I like if I'm going to play on like a not super public high profile team, why not West Coast California? Like that seems like a much better place. Yeah. And they they have the money they <laughs> they somehow magic like we talked about magically got the senators to take on Bodker. so like they have the money the space they they totally do it so they're there uh, there's this like the mystery team the mystery team showed up I don't think anyone's identified team number five interesting I there was rumors I don't know if it was confirmed Dallas Dallas was one of them which is a weird fifth team. Yeah, that seems like, well, yeah, I wouldn't think that he would go to Dallas, but Montreal definitely tried to show up. Like they, I think I don't even think like Bergeron probably didn't even like wait for the invitation. He just showed up. <laughs> He's just hanging out outside the door, just trying to sneak in. <laughs> yeah. So, so like they could have been who? Okay, so let's take you or John Tavares. Mm-hmm. Put yourself into John John Tavares' headspace. Where do you go? You've been offered an 8 by 88 8 by 88 from the Islanders. You've been offered 1 by 15.9 from the Leafs. From the Leafs. Yep. And probably like 7 by 70. They're probably like you can take one of these two. And everyone else offers you 7 by 77. I would take the the 15. So you'd go for the one year to Toronto. Sign the 15 and then sign like the eight year deal with Toronto the year after that. Or or go somewhere else. Go back to the island. Back pull pull the a LeBron. Island. Just return back to the team. They, they, they'll have to resell the jerseys because everyone's burned them. So they'll be making more money. So what if you, okay, what if, what if Toronto doesn't offer the one year? Everyone offers the seven by seven, seven, and then you get the eight by eight, eight. I'd, I'd stay in the with the island. You'd stay in an island. Yeah, I would for sure. I would for sure go to San Jose. What like just quality of team? Quality, quality of, team. of location. Location. Don't have to play on the like. I just don't have to play on the island anymore. Yeah, uh, I get to play on the west coast. I don't know. That seems like doesn't that not seem like a like. I don't have to be, like, again, I think I've made this argument. Like, I got Brett Burns here. I don't have to be, like, the face of the franchise, but I can be. Like, I've got Brett Burns. I've got Couture. I've got Pavelski. I've got good players around me. I don't have to, like, I can be a leader, but I don't have to be, like, the face that everybody's looking to all the time. Because he doesn't seem like a guy that wants that. Yeah, for sure. He doesn't want to be the most outspoken guy. He's he'll be it if he needs to be, but I think he's content to let he'd be like, hey, hey, Bernsey, let's just we'll just do we'll we'll do this together. We'll be we'll both be the face of these franchises, this franchise, and we'll be good. Well, and they'll bring they'll bring him in, and then they'll bring Joe Thornton back on like a a tiny deal, and him and Bernsey can go walk around shirtless for yeah. the entire season, and Tavares will just play hockey. So, do you think my guess is Tuesday afternoon? We hear that he's re-signed with the island. Yeah, I don't think it's going to make it all the way to uh, no. to July first. Kovalchuk is a weird, weird signing for the Kings. Three years. They've handed a thirty-five-year-old player who hasn't played in the NHL for quite some time a three-year deal to come play on a team that's already old and like past their prime. 
I don't know why. Like, I don't know why they did it. It doesn't make any sense. I just still don't think like they're still they're going to be a borderline playoff team. With yeah, or like without I, him, I don't think this really changes a whole lot for them. Like, would you, would you say 20, 20, 30, 50? Like, that's 50 points, 20 goals? Yeah. That's about it? And that, that's good, but, like, you now have... You are paying Kovalchuk over 6 to be 35. You're paying Dustin Brown 5.8. You're paying Jeff Carter, who's 33, 5.2. And you're paying Dion Phaneuf. Do you... Because, like, this is the exact same deal as pa- Patrick Marlowe. And I for sure would take Marlowe. Cause like, Marlowe is a more known quantity. There's no, there's less risk with Marlowe. Yeah, like, the third year, again, like, everyone, like, the third year with Marlowe was scary. Like, everyone was like, you don't know what you're going to get out of him in that third year. But I think you know even less what you're going to get out of Kovalchuk in the third year. And, I, and we're a year into Marlowe's deal. And it looks like it'll be just fine so far. Like he's kind of is what it is. What what he is, Kovalchuk. I don't know. I'm. I don't know. Yeah, he he had a uh, solid year in the K this year. Like he still puts up numbers over there. Um, I just I find it interesting the 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 choice of three years, the choice of the team that he. Not his choice of the team. Obviously, it's a very comparable to you. You know, West Coast. You can head over there. It, it's fine. I don't. I don't blame him for it. I just don't know why the kings of all teams. Over him, it's great. He's making. He's making eighteen million to go play in L.A. Like I don't see. It just seems like this is a. The Kings are in that weird spot where you just like you're stuck in fringe playoff territory, and they just need like the only way they'll get out of it is to burn it down. And but they can't. You're not going to get that if you keep signing free agents. I don't know how you can burn it down. How are, like who's going to take the guys on their team? Well, that like you just you stop signing people and you just you wait until all those deals are done. Yeah, like you. I guess this really hinges on what happens with Doughty next year for sure, right? Like if he if he leaves, that becomes a lot easier. If he comes back, which he probably will, because no one ever leaves, aka Tavares. Um, then that becomes easier. But like, you just, you stop bringing in free agents, especially like building a team through free agency is the worst of ideas. Oh, it's so, and bad. so like, just, just stop. Just don't do that. The reason why teams are totally okay, like, again, going back to Tavares, like, there are, there are very few guys that hit free agency that you're just like, yeah, this can be the, like, the cornerstone to our franchise for the next five years. Yeah, that's not available ever anywhere. And like, so, and it's, it's interesting because we actually have a few of those guys in the next couple of years, Tavares, Doughty, Carlson. Yeah. But even then it's like, um, I don't know. No. It's, yeah. it's super, it's super weird. The Koval Chuck thing. So how do you feel like? And do we need? Do you want to touch on the draft? Yeah, let's, let's let's touch on on the draft. The first two picks went as expected. Yeah, Rasmus Dalin went to Buffalo. He's going to be good. Yeah, uh, Andrei Sveshnikov went to Carolina. Expect him to be good. They didn't mess up that pick. And then we got to Montreal at number three. I think we all know how terrible of a general manager Mark Bergevin is. Yeah, he's really bad. Montreal fans waited with bated breath to see how he would screw this up. Now, I don't know how much, like, we don't typically talk a lot about junior players and prospects on this show. Did you have any thoughts on, like, after those two who were kind of consensus, do you have any kind of idea of where you wanted, like, where you thought people would slot in? I did not. Okay. So for me, like, and I know he was the consensus idea, I, I think he was the consensus number three, Philip Zadina, who ended up going to Detroit in what I think is a fantastic steal of a pick for them. But uh, yes, Barry Kote Konami. I, I made that sound a lot more Japanese than I should have. Um, but he, so he was, he was a, a Finnish center. And quite honestly, if you looked at where he was projected to be going, he was projected to go in about like the, the around 10th. Uh, not, not the best of picks there. Lots of people, but it kind of, there was like a, a lull in players. And so 
teams that did well for themselves. Uh, Detroit did very well for themselves in getting Zadina. Yeah. The Islanders, anytime you ha- you pick what they're picked, 12, 11th and 12th, and the guys that they got there, Noah Dobson, um, good pick. So it's it's hard to not have a good draft when you pick like that. It's not like, uh, unless you go like Boston did a few years ago where they picked three in a row and somehow tanked them all and are still a competent team. Um, Nobody knows. And then, you know, the the Rangers made some trades to move around a fair amount. Um, but those were the, those were the ones that stood out to me. So, you know, obviously Buffalo, Carolina did well for themselves. The Islanders and Detroit were the ones that I think came out of this doing well. Yeah. And like, like the Sabres, the only way they don't come out of this looking good is if they didn't take Darlene, right? Or did he say his name? I always forget. I think my, my favorite stat from this draft, uh, three different Rasmuses drafted in the first round. Mm. Yeah, you you were a, a the proud Leafs, Leafs the took Leafs Erasmus. Took yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I like. I always find the draft was kind of what it was. Like I don't think I don't it's, know. Like it I, wasn't a crazy great draft class. Oh. So there's a lot of people that are like yeah whatever. And you hear all the comps right, and everyone's trying to get excited about the picks that their teams have made, and we'll find out in a few years how good they actually are. Yeah, I don't I don't really know. I, I like Edmonton finally took their big right-handed defenseman. Yeah. We well, I we'll see how that goes. We'll see. How, I'm assuming it won't go good cuz Edmonton, but like did, did you hear there's like I don't know if it was rumors or if it was just like started rumors about like the Lucic buyout like the, that's like that's where they're at they're already talking buyout of him yeah which is hilarious well and so then some more trade lots of trading up and down and around your leafs traded down twice yeah um which whatever it's it's fine and then we got to a couple more deals after the draft or i guess one of them happened during the draft day yesterday and that's the biggest trade of the weekend the calgary flames sending off Michael Furland, Dougie Hamilton, and Adam Fox to Carolina for Elias Lindholm and Noah Hannafin. What are the Calgary Flames doing? Well, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Uh, as someone who cares about chemistry in my locker room, I don't want responsible, hardworking, uh, maybe, maybe on the quiet side, uh educated educated lifelong learner uh i don't want someone who plays hard uh i don't want or well i don't want someone who's good at hockey like really good at hockey like don't give me that um also don't give me um you know that right-handed defenseman big defenseman that the edmonton oilers are always looking for that a lot of teams are looking for. Just, you would love one on the Leafs. Just don't give me one of those. I don't want one of those. I don't want a good one. Okay. I want I want one that might be good. Okay. So, so that's so I understand what the Flames are doing because don't give me any of that stuff. Don't give me a partier. Okay. Well, then you then you are quite contented. Yeah, <laughs> Calgary Flames. I I love the fact that after this trade. Dougie Hamilton getting raked over the coals. Why? Like, it's just, I get that Canadian media love to do this and it make, it makes no sense. Correction. Let me just correct that. Okay. Not all Canadian media loves to do this. Certain Canadian media loves to do it. I would say, okay, so correct. Not all Canadian media, but every Canadian market has some individual who works there who likes to do that. Yeah. And it is. And then there's a couple of national ones, and they are the worst. Yeah. Um, and so it's it's the same kind of person that made Phil Kessel out to be the bad guy in Toronto, that made P.K. Subban out to be the bad guy in Montreal, and now Dougie Hamilton. Uh, museums frowned upon by John Shannon. Don't go, uh, like... If the team's going out to Moxie's for a night, which... Like, why are you going to Moxie's? <laughs> right? Like, has anyone... like? I'm not saying, like, I do okay. 
And even I'm like, look, Moxie's like, I, I can go to a better place than Moxie's. Can I question for our listeners in the USA? Did, like, is Moxie's? I don't think Moxie's is Moxie's a Canadian thing. Or is yeah, it a, I don't. I don't even think it's like across Canada. So what's the equivalent? What do we? It's for sure. It, like, it's above Olive Garden for sure. I would say it's is like. It, I don't know. I'd much rather go to Olive Garden. But Canadian Olive Garden is very like it's a it's a thing here that's like right. I guess that's true because we don't have like we have like one per city, right? Yeah, it's not like but like it's not. I'm trying to be like I think Olive Olive Garden's a good comp or like a Chili's. Yeah, like a like a steak version of Chili's. But like Moxie, and I guess that's the current. Like I remember, like Moxie's never used to be like this. Moxie used to be much lower end. They've gotten like higher class lately. They've they've tried to turn themselves into the keg or Earls. Yeah, I assume. Yeah, but like, which (laughs) oh the keg? That's an American one, right? I don't. I assume no. I assume that anything that advertises on TSN is not. (laughs) Fair enough. I just like I'm just like like all of these restaurants that we're listing listing, I'm like, I don't know if any of these are in the USA. Either way. Not not the best choice flames. So that's your go to like, for a pregame meal. Pick pick somewhere a little nicer. Like to me, like I don't know, like and th- I know it's changed since that since this. But like back in the day, like all the old people would go to Smitty's for breakfast and then Moxie's for dinner. Yeah, there's apparently so Moxie's mm-hmm. started in Calgary. There's oh. yeah. So that, that's the thing. Um 2016 they expanded to the states in Dallas. And that's probably it. So this is it's not a thing that's like anyone's down. Like no, no one knows. So so it's like it is a below average restaurant that wants to be above average. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Which I think is an and apt then- comparison to the Flames. <laughs> So, An average team that wants to be above average. But, like, the thing that I don't get is why Why do they care? Why do the Flames... Let's pretend that this actually is a thing. I think this speaks more to the Flames, like all the other players, than to Dougie Hamilton. Like, if, if that's an actual issue yeah, with the team. If you're mad because... Little old Dougie doesn't want to come out after the game or whatever or hang out. Like, who cares? He shows up and he's one of your best players. Why are you sad? Yeah. And, like, I, again, not in the room. I would be very surprised if Dougie Hamilton was an actual problem. Is the guy a problem if he just doesn't show up anywhere? He shows up to practice. He shows up for training. He does all the stuff that he, he just doesn't show up for the extracurricular. Yeah. Why is that a problem? Yeah. I don't. If the entire team did that, you might have a problem. But one guy, that's that's fine. Like I, I do not take issue with that at all. There's there are much worse player traits than quiet. We saw. Well, I think my go to example of this is Chris Bosh in the NBA. Like he was a top notch player who, after every game, just went back to his hotel room and played video games. Like, that's what Chris Bosh did. He was never one to go out on the town. He was a giant nerd who loved video games. Yeah. And no one ever said like, like when, when the big, he was on the big three, no one was like, yeah, but like, but Chris Bosh, like he doesn't really like to hang out with like LeBron and D Wade. Nobody cares. You like, you, you play well, you win games. That's what matters. This is just the flames. This is probably what happened. They made the trade and then they realized, oh no, like everyone's told us how bad this is. And everyone was like, yeah, it was really bad. And then they were like, oh, we shouldn't have done that. Let's, let's just like throw him under the bus. Let's just make him just sound like the worst person. He likes museums. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like, yeah. Like, like that's the thing. That's the crazy thing about this. Like that's the worst thing that they can come up with about Dougie Hamilton. He he wanted to he wanted to learn things about like stuff he didn't know about. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. was the worst. Yeah. Uh, Art and society culture. No no Dougie. He, We're he, going for drinks. He doesn't want to have a burger at a place that like no one really likes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, 
such a bad such a bad team player oh, but what a what a joke oh uh, i another thing that intrigues me about this so i guess aside from dougie hamilton being really good um the flames did get better so if you look at it from like a trading from an area of strength to improve an area of need they did improve up front and they're selling it as the fact of elias lindholm who's they're going to be sliding in on a line with goudreau and monahan so he's he's they've already said like he's our first line winger um they'll, that'll give him a chance he'll be an improvement over for sure over furland that's how they're framing this um but what intrigues me is the fact that Bill Peters, the new coach in Calgary, was the coach in Carolina last year. So he essentially just brought his favorites with him. Yeah, I, I am interested to see. Like, Hannafin has never quite lived up to what his, like, pre-draft was like. Like, the pre-draft, what everyone was saying about him. He hasn't quite lived up to that, but yet he's still really good. Like, he's a good defenseman. They're not going to be sad, but I don't know if he's as good as Dougie Hamilton. No, and that's I. I think it might have been in that same Eric Francis article that uh, that you shared on Twitter today. Um, in in which I should have said retweets are not endorsements when I sent that out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what the the point that was made in that was they were like, yeah, so they're gonna. Put him on the first line, like the first pairing. So they're going to put Hannafin with Geo. And then they're going to move Brody. Now they're moving Brody oh, back oh, right, with Geo. Back with Geo, yeah. And <laughs> and he, uh, Hannafin and Hamannick are going to play. So yeah. it's the ha-ha pairing. Which, you know what, like Hamannick has had a, had a really hard time adjusting. You know what's really going to help him adjust? Getting him a new line mate. Yeah, and... TJ Brody came off a terrible season and sure he had switched and played with Hamannick and he had his best seasons with Giordano, but maybe putting him on the top pairing against better competition isn't what you need to do to get him better. Oh, this, this is not going to go well. So that, that was the, that was the case they made was, yeah, so we're going to, the, that Hannafin's better than Brody, but Brody's going back with Gio. It, it's not going to work. So we'll see. How long these pairings last, we'll see how long uh, Brad Living lasts in Calgary because these moves are not inspiring a whole lot of confidence. Yeah, I I didn't understand it. I was like, good for good for Carolina. I don't know if it makes a whole lot of difference for them. Yeah, like, they, I, again, they took some, they have a lot of forwards that are like kind of trying to sort themselves out. Yeah. And, they improved again. They improved on defense. They've had a great defense core. Um, if they can get some quality goaltending, they'll be quite good this year. So yeah, like, do we believe that Furland will be as good? Like playing away from G- uh, not Giordano Goudreau because no. he was playing with Goudreau. No, that's and- probably why he produced as much as he did. Yeah, no, Furland's not gonna Furland. What thirty forty points if that? Like I think that, yeah. So. Um, nothing to get too excited about there. And so, um, I guess one other point that, uh, out of the draft weekend is looking at, uh, the Senators pick. So they, they took Brady Tikachuk and, you know, I think everyone knows how we feel about the whole Tikachuk family. Um, I, I don't really have any strong preferences about Keith. How do you feel about Keith Kachuk? I don't know. It's kind of like whatever. I, now that I've seen his sons, I'm like, Keith, could have done better. So Should have done better. Yeah. Um, that said, they made the pick, taking Brady Kachuk, which means next year's pick goes to the Colorado Avalanche in the Matt Duchesne trade. How high is next year's Ottawa Senators draft pick? It will. They will have, I don't know how high it'll be, but they will... They will have the second. It will be the second highest percentage. They won't be. They won't have the highest percentage. They won't finish last. I guess they finish second last. Okay. Um, there was Dom Lushwinski who does athletic yeah. stuff. He had a, a piece that he looked into. Like, there's lots of math in that. It, there's well. a there's a lot of math. I'm going to boil it down to the fact that if they keep Eric Carlson, it's like fifty fifty if it's a better pick or not. Like they're essentially with Eric Carlson, they're projected to pick fourth. Right. With Odara Carlson, it's above fourth. So um, 
which I'm okay with. But the per, like the percentages to pick because like you right you, yeah like because like the lottery, it's but my my guess is it will be fifth or better. That would be my guess. Yeah, they they did to me they did the right thing in picking this year though. I wouldn't have given this pick up. Yeah, I don't Because like the odds of you, you don't know where you're going to f- slot in the lottery, right? Like Colorado had the worst season in forever since the McDavid tank season. And they weren't act- like actually trying to tank. And they right. picked fourth. Yeah. So. so you never know. And then Buffalo was terrible this year and actually picked first. So yeah. Yeah. it's 50-50 how, like, how that's going to go. I know it's not actually 50-50, but still. Um that's good it, math. It's fifty fifty. Yeah, yeah, Ma- makes yeah. up for the the math that Dom did in his piece. So, um, that's kind of wraps up the weekend. There was any minor trades here and there. Um, anything that stood out to you from from this weekend? Not really. Just other than just like the lack of activity. There just hasn't been a whole lot. Like, I, so I think it's going to be a quiet off season. The like the free agency, not super. Like the the pool behind Tavares is really, really weak. Like there was a there was a I think Drager said Tyler Bozak's agent is getting all the calls on Tyler Bozak now that the interview period is over. And I'm like, that's really bad for teams that need a center. <laughs> like Tyler yeah. Bozak, very solid. Like he's a solid center. Like yeah. he actually is a center playing center. Yeah. And I'm really happy for him because he's about to get paid. The Leafs aren't going to pay him, but someone will. And he's going to get a five year, probably you know, like five by five or something like that. There's there's only at this point in time, three like actual centers who play center that you would even look at, right? Like it's him, Tavares and Stastny. You know, and Thornton. Yeah. Thor- okay. Yeah. Thornton so as well. Like, but like, if I'm I'm thinking of like a longer ish. Like Thornton's right. gonna get a one year wherever he ends up. Right, and like, but like, and you're not thrilled with Statsny. Like, you probably don't, because isn't this his second go around in free agency? Yeah, so he just came off a what a, a seven by four. So he signed a short one. He only signed a four year deal. Oh, okay, with so St. Louis, like what thirty two or something like that. Yeah. So, but he's still on the older side. You don't want to give him a seven year deal. He's no, gonna be, most certainly not. No, and you don't want to give. And like a guy like Bozak, like I said, like he's gonna get a five by five stats, and he may be a three by seven now. Like, yeah, yeah. So like they'll that. they'll get paid, but um, a little definitely weak. One thing before we get into the rest of this, we'll, I just want to shove this in here. Don't forget, listeners, to keep sending in your suggestions for names for the show with Tiny Mike. Yes. Um, the name the podcast contest is going great. We've got some great suggestions. You have until like middle of July. So keep them coming in. We we're keeping track of them. We're writing them down. Um, I know we've got some leaders in the clubhouse, which we'll, we'll keep those under wraps. We don't want to, to spoil it. Maybe, maybe we'll run some by Mike, see what he thinks and, uh, tease that next week. Keep them coming in on Twitter at fourth line podcast. The, the email mail at the fourth line podcast.com, Facebook, however you want to get a hold of us, send those in and, uh, keep those coming. It doesn't have to be hockey related because it's not necessarily a hockey show. Yeah, we we we're gonna talk some hockey on there, but not always. Yeah, so like it's yeah, oh, just whatever you think works. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's so like other than other than just like the lack of activity, nothing's really been noticeable. I like I gotta assume there's gonna be a trade or two with notable names this week before July 1st. Yeah, I, I would assume that we're going to have some sort of activity this week, um, and we'll see what comes of that. No, again, like free agent-wise, not a whole lot. It's literally like Statsny, a couple Leafs, and JVR, and, and Bozak. And, um, but I think looking at the teams available, there's not a lot of teams that could sign John Tavares. There are a lot of teams that any of these players could go to, like... If you're looking for a defenseman, if you want a scoring winger, if you want a center, like there's not a lot of teams that are going to say no to any of that. And there's a, a fair amount that have enough cap space that they can make these players work. Yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing July 1st? Do you have any 
July 1st, that's Sunday, Sunday right? Yeah. Uh, Sunday, I am going every, every Canada Day for what, three, three or so years? Uh, some friends, family, we go camping. They go for like the full week. Um, I can't do that this go round. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna drive up there. So I'm gonna say, excuse me, wife, can you please drive the car so I can follow Twitter and put on the fan 960? It's the one time a year I listen to that. And so you can text me because I'm not going to have data. I'll have cell, I'll have cell coverage, but not data. Okay. So I will, I will text you all the things that happen yeah. while you're, cause you're, you're at the farm. I'm going to the farm yeah. for the weekend. So I don't, I don't think I get data out there. What's, uh, what is the Canada Day plans? Anything big? Some fireworks, we're, some barbecue? Um, we're going to go to the Pinocchio Stampede. Are you going to the rodeo? Uh, we're going to the Chucks. Okay. That, that is, so for, I'm not going this year. Ever since, well, the last two years, I haven't. Every year, that one and Strathmore. It's a good time. Yeah. Strathmore Strathmore has the running of the bulls, though. It's really fun to watch people mm. get really hurt by a bull. Yeah. So, no, we were, I think we talked about, but my we're going with my parents, and they preferred Chucks over, over rodeo. rodeo. So. Nice. That's a good time. It's a yeah, good. We're looking, it's, so. it's the second best rodeo in the province. Yeah. So I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, I'm hoping fireworks. There's got to be fireworks that night. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, there'll be fireworks. On, you're going on Canada Day. Yeah, on Canada. Yeah, Day. there'll be fireworks after the chucks. There might even be. Usually, the only reason there might not be is sometimes they do a concert and they might put them after the concert. Oh, so come on, come on, Pinocchio Stampede. Yeah. I don't have time for this concert. Right. There'll be there'll be all kinds of. I actually one of the best. I uh, went Canada, drove back into Calgary from Pinocchio is what, two hours from Calgary for those who aren't from yeah, here. Not that cool. Not um, quite, but yeah. it's like, it's on the second, there's like the Trans Canada Highway and then there's like the highway from Calgary to Edmonton and it's on that. And so literally driving back into the city, we just watched like fireworks show after fireworks show on the highway back into town. It was, it was that's nice. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's the it's Canada Day plans. Let's go, uh, yeah, go to the, go to the Stampede. Nice. Well, you'll have data there then, at the right. at the rodeo or the chucks. I guess that's true. I just like because like free agency starts at like ten or eleven in the morning. Yeah, I I have so. been at that for I can ex- specifically think of sitting there in the stands when Corey Schneider was traded to the Devils. Um, that was draft day then. That was draft day. Yeah, because um, he was traded for the pick. Yeah. Um, driving to the rodeo was when Phil Kessel was traded to the Pens. Like mm. this is so we you think so something big could happen when well, the fourth line goes to the Pinocchio Stampede. Players get traded, people yeah. sign place. Like th- things are going to happen anyways. I I literally just spend the day like in between events scouring the news at that. So that's oh, a that's gonna be a fun day for you. I'm looking forward to that on your behalf. It'll be good. I'm yeah. gonna go, I'll be in the area. We're we're at Gull Lake. Oh, huh, that's not that's so, not far away. No. That's why we, sometimes we pop over to there. Maybe Stop. I'll try to convince them to, to go to the Chucks. Hop skipping a jump. Yeah. Um well, that'll be good. Some some free agent stuff's gonna happen this weekend. Um lots of lots of news. So we'll be back next week with more free agent things happening. Um, we'll be covering all of the signings, whatever trades, um, lots could still happen. You never know. Montreal is probably going to trade Pacioretty for nothing. That'll be fun. <laughs> apparently, apparently that, that relationship has just gone. Like, is there, is there a player that likes to play for his team? <laughs> um, we're about to find yeah. out with Tavares. It's true. Yeah. If, if there is, well, I, I guess Stamkos, he liked it. Yeah. Does he still like it though? Probably. I don't know. Maybe not. We'll find out. I don't know. We won't. We'll, we'll find out if he gets traded. We'll find out if Tampa Media suddenly decides to share this dirt they've had on him this entire mm-hmm. time. But Thomas Carvalho. <laughs> how was how was his relationship with Toronto Media? It's probably not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Doubtful. Um, so yeah, tune in next week. We'll be, uh, I believe we're, we're going to be doing this on the Monday next week, but who knows? That could change. Yeah. Cause Joel's going to be at the chuck wagons on the Sunday. Yeah. I'm That's coming, happening. coming back from the farm on the Monday. There you go. So, uh, we'll be back with all of the happenings after free agency. Um, just 
a reminder to all of you out there, if you have not gone to albertapodcastnetwork.com slash survey, we would love you to fill out your podcast listening survey. Uh, we'll be in the episode description. Just click that link. It'll just take a couple minutes. Uh, by the time we finish describing the rest of the show, I bet you could fill it out. It's, it's short, sweet, and we really appreciate if you did that. Um, head over to do our Twitter. You can let us know uh, your name, ideas, any questions or thoughts you have on the show. Actually, we just got one of those questions in. Someone just asked us a question on the oh. Twitter, just randomly. Um, David, let, okay. let's, let's wrap this up with this question. And Facebook, the fourth line podcast.com. There's great articles over there. Mike Laborn, uh, is distracting himself from the Red Wings by writing World Cup articles on the site. So if you're a soccer fan, do that. Here's the question. Is it better? So you're, you're a player. You're 18 years old. You're in the draft. Mm-hmm. Would you rather be drafted fifth overall or 25th overall? So you're, you're either going to a team fifth overall this year would have been, uh, the Arizona Coyotes. 25th overall was traded to the St. Louis Blues. So if they kept the pick, would you rather be drafted fifth overall? So you're a fifth overall level talent or 25th overall level talent going to the Leafs? Fifth overall. Yeah? Yeah. Because I'm going to play in the NHL a whole lot sooner. And get that money and get that stuff. Yeah. 25th overall, they don't always make the NHL. Yeah. That is a fact. And teams... Fifth... Fifths don't either, necessarily, but you're more likely to. Yeah. The the exact number I slips my mind on that very steep percent chance of playing. But yeah, fifths, you're you're gonna get time at least. You there are late first rounders who never played. Yeah. And yeah, fifth for sure. Yeah, I would probably say the same. So, you know, send those in. If you have a random question, you want our thoughts, thank you, David, for sending that out to us. Uh, you can do that on Twitter as well. And uh, if we find time on our shows, we will get to those and we'll do another mailbag like we did a couple weeks ago. Uh, until next week when we are back and John Tavares stays on the island. Boom City. 